happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there and to my dad, Pastor Charles, I'm wishing you a happy Father's Day, Dad. Oh, how nice. <laughs> <laughs> You're a father of seven children. Yes, that'd be true. You're a grandfather, but you're also a father to many sons and daughters in the gospel. Many who are that's, watching today. That's a good thing. You are loved. We celebrate you. We celebrate all the fathers out there today. Well, thank you, Rob. Yes. Appreciate it. So what are we talking about today? I'm excited. I actually know. Well, but, huh? to begin with, so Mr. Burns, let me ask you something. You finally got me to shave. It's a miracle. So, in return, I think it's time for you to send me a little more mozzarella money oh, okay. and maybe enclose a little offering. Then we'd oh, be square. Boy. Since it's Father's Day, we'll let it slide. Okay, here we go. What's the message today, Dad? Since it's Father's Day, it's pretty incredible because Robin always asks me to think on what we're going to speak. The funniest thing just happened to me where a thought came to my mind about the principle of my high school, his name was Father Snyder. Okay. So, since we're talking about fathers, I have a Father Snyder story. Awesome. But before I get to that, I, I want to say a little background so you would understand my interaction with him a little better. Is that okay? Love it. Years back, my father was a police lieutenant. He loved our community, coached a lot of sporting teams, but didn't like how the government was run, decided to run for mayor, caused a lot of riff. The opponent had- Sounds like a true Smith. Well, the opponent had just won the election by six votes, you know, dead people were voting. I mean, mm. just total yeah. craziness. But we were all friends. We knew the other candidate. They lived across the street from us. But my dad decided to run for mayor. Started up a lot of things, but of course he lost. I got in a few fist fights over it that people weren't going to vote for my dad. Uh oh. He was very patriotic and it seemed like anything an event happened in Washington, he would take us, our family, to Washington. When President Kennedy was assassinated, we went to, you know, the memorial walk through the DC. Mm. Then when Robert Kennedy was assassinated, we went. But my dad was disgusted with his job. They took him from being the head of the detective bureau in clothes, plain clothes rather, to walking the beat in uniform. They just harassed him and my family a lot. So while we were in Washington, he filled out an application for the State Department to be a public safety advisor. They only picked one out of 500 he got picked. Amazing. Packed his bags and they said, send you to 70 countries, but back then he needed to go to Vietnam. My family stayed home for the first year of his two year tour, but my mom missed him, everybody missed him. And so we went to a safe haven in the Philippines for a year. Mm. And it was an incredible year. That's where I learned to play tennis. My mom thought she died and went to heaven. We had a maid, a cook, a gardener, a beautiful time. So here it is. I didn't do a lot of study and I was sophomore in high school at that time. And I had started St. Peter's prep freshman year. And of course my sophomore year was in the Philippines. And now we're coming back. I'm going to enter my junior year back in St. Peter's. They sent the transcripts back to my school. So I'll never forget coming into Father Snyder's office. He didn't say one word, didn't ask me one word, Robin, about uh, school, hmm. about the transcripts, I should say. All he wanted to know was about the trip, hmm. how amazing it was, hmm, awesome. the opportunity that I had as a young person to travel the world, because we visited many countries uh, going there and, and returning. And my experience living in the Philippines, that's what excited him mm. as a, quote, father. He wasn't just interested in my, you know, mock, so to speak, in mm. school. Not that he didn't care, but that, I mean, he knew I went, he knew I passed. Mm -hmm. But he was more interested in the experience that I had. So cool, Dad. And I think our Heavenly Father mm -hmm. and Earthly Fathers are very similar in that. That's true. So I have a cool thing. What did that feel like when you went in there, knowing that, you know, thinking he's going to talk about, you know, as the principal, he's right. going to talk about your grades or ask you, you know, maybe drill you about this or that. And then it all totally wants... put me at ease. Right? Isn't that oh, a good feeling? Seriously. So the same, I'm with you about relating So I it. kicked back and I was like, 
We smoked a few cigars. Fire. No. <laughs> 15. But think about how we feel, what you, how you felt. That's how we are to relate to our Heavenly Father. That He don't call us in to drill us or to, he, He's it's there to, to, you know, see, how, to, to see. Sound like you now with the accent. Right. He's there to see how we feel and how we're doing. Because He cares and He enjoys wow. it. It's enjoyable to hear about how, from you. I, I felt like he was my more of like a best friend almost then. Wow. But I still had that great respect of for course. him in that office. Isn't as a that principal. how it's supposed to be with the Lord? It is. An honor, a respect, but yet he's our friend. Oh. It's amazing. So tip my hat to Father Snyder, who I'm sure is in heaven looking down today. <laughs> True. When I think of my dad growing up, I can't help but think of him as a, a as a provider. Right. A protector. My dad always worked several jobs. No such thing as nine to five. He was always mm. doing something to provide something extra, whether it was buy someone a bicycle. And protection. Mm -hmm. Always felt safe when mm. you're, you know, around your father. It's true. And I always knew he could take care of himself as well. Mm -hmm. Short story about my dad in Vietnam. During the first year of my dad in Vietnam, the Tet Offensive broke out and we didn't hear from my dad for three months. Mm. In fact, the State Department called saying he was missing in action. My mother, my mom freaked out. But prior to him going, we had taken a trip up to Montreal to a, a church called St. Joseph's. The reason we went was my grandma, my mother's mom, she told us a story during World War II how everybody on the block enlisted and there was a tradition that if you went to this church in Montreal and St. Joseph's and say a prayer on each step there was a hundred steps going up to the top of the church that your request would be granted and she told me how she went there and put in the names of 40 something young men and everyone returned except one guy whose name she forgot to put down now listen, oh my gosh. all I know ah. as a young kid that had an impression on right. me, I don't know the ins and outs, but I was like, I was like, wow, right. let's do this for dad, it, mm. it works. Love so it. prior to my dad going to Vietnam, our family went up to Montreal to St. Joseph's to go up these hundred steps, mm. put his name in. I was confident, although he was missing for three months, mm. that he was coming back. Now I don't understand why some things work different ways in people's lives. All I know is this is my story, okay? Right. Yes. After three months, we heard from him. The thought of losing my dad was just so painful to me, but I really had faith, and I, I thank- How old were you about? Uh, 13, wow. 14. Love that. I just know that that was instilled in me, and plus that love I had for my dad, mm -hmm. it just compelled me to believe and I really had no doubt that he was coming home. I think I've shared this before, the, the time that I hurt my dad the most was when I went to the city, my car got towed away, hmm. and I called somebody else for help instead of him. Right. That really upset him very badly that I didn't come to him. And I think that's a good point it about is. our relationship with, with God, that he wants us to come to us. Right. He's our father. Yeah. Many of you out there are fathers, but the, all of us, regardless of whether you're a father or not, we all have a Heavenly Father. We're all on a level playing field when it comes to being able to talk to Him. One thing I can say about from experience with you yes. as your daughter is that growing up, whatever it is, whenever I come to you, sometimes I have a hard time, right, spitting it out. Yeah, okay. And I beat around the bush, and then what do you say to me? Get to the point. Get to the point. Spit it out already. What do you want? <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, Dad, well, this is what happened, or and, and then it's always like 99.999 percent is yes. always all right. We'll figure it out. It's not a big deal. And there's always this measure of grace, which you would think by now I would be like, "Ah, oh, Dad's gonna handle it. I ain't worried." <laughs> but I can't because I I don't want to hurt you because I love you. Right. But the same goes with the Lord. It's always He's full of compassion. He's full of grace. So it's a good example, it's Dad. True. You've been to all your children that we know and we call Dad. Right, guys? Mike, call Dad. <laughs> when you're in trouble, call the big guy. But, you know, he's always there.
Well, in closing, this was awesome, Dad. Great word. But Here we go. No, his, his, no I just, I just the go, question. I just Who's go, my favorite? Who you is know? your favorite? Think about it. And that was your chance on national. I'm, I'm beginning to like, not like anybody, to be quite honest with you. That's so full of it. I just want to be left alone. Oh, hush it, Bubba. People, when they get old, they're like, That's oh, not I, don't, true. I don't want to be alone. I'm praying to be alone. Dad, be honest. What would you do without us? Huh? You'd be lost. Mr. Burns, he'd be lost. Well, anyway, we love you. Have the happiest Father's Day, and I pray that you continue to celebrate your dad. If he's not here, celebrate someone who's like a father to you. And let me say this, that my kids, each one of you, Michael, Dawn in heaven, Robin, Jason and Charles both in heaven, Kimberly, Casey, all my kids, you do mean the world to me, and thank you for my dear wife who was just a wonderful She's mother. Yeah. But all my kids, I love you. Psalm 102, verse two has been my prayer forever for you guys. If I had one prayer to be answered, it would be the scripture that says, serve the Lord with gladness. Happy Father's Day. Peace. All right, so one quick question. What's a tip of advice you would give to fathers out there? People who are ready a dad, maybe that they're gonna be a dad. What's a tip of advice from a father like you, who's raised seven? Get a vasectomy. <laughs> dad, stop. That's, that incidentally, that's a good tip. Dad, can you please say, I'm taking that out. Okay, I'll be serious for a moment. Thank you. What's the one tip I would give? Now, do you want me to give you the comical ones or the serious ones? The advice I would give you is make a lot of money. They, they cost a lot. They eat you out of house and home. <laughs> <laughs> what I used to say, what's another plate of spaghetti? <laughs> but that's when they were little. Then they're older, you know. Everybody needs this, they need that, they need this, they Come need on, that. Come on, Dad, you got something in there to give. Best advice I can give a dad, make believe you're listening when they talk. Meanwhile, you listen to everything. Best advice, I, as you can see, there really is no one-line answer to this. It's, it's really a... Oh my, <laughs> you are so pathetic. You're shot. <laughs> one something as a father that you lived by. I lived Always by. be a giver. Don't provoke your children. Give more than enough. You keep going, you're doing um, pretty good. Well, I know how you've raised us and what things you've done, you know? Hell yeah, I got it. The golden rule, do unto others before they do it to you. <laughs> I'm done, <laughs> we're done. Well, most of you know that our mission statement at Labor Love USA is found in Malachi 4, 6, where God promises that in the last days, he will turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to their fathers. What a promise, and he says, he will do it, right? That is our mission at Labor Love. Each week when you continue to give of your finances and sowing and tithing, that is what you're sowing into, that mission. That, uh, that's what we're called to at Labor Love USA, to go take a generation of young people and a generation of fathers. In other words, relationships and bring healing. Wow. We are passionate about that. So thank you for partnering with us. Remember, go online, laborloveusa.org. Hit the donate button or send it into 3215 North Fifth Street in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, 18301. See you here next week.